Hello everyone, um, we're back for more chemical uh, perspectives, uh, this time around about aromatic compounds. Uh, and as you can see here on this intro slide, you know, um, you have uh, Kekule right here, who is the person that um, thought about the idea of aromaticity, you know, back in the day. Uh, and um, as you can see, there's a bunch of uh, <laughs> souvenirs, chemical souvenirs you can have, you know, like the uh, RNA strands, you know, you have some uh, moieties, some of them amino acid moieties, some of them more, you know, like caffeine uh, things. But yeah, this level of aromaticity is, is a big one. It's, um, it's all related to aromas. It's also related to a very special kind of chemical reactivity, which we'll investigate in detail in this entire lecture. So we're going to start by talking about benzene, which is probably the one aromatic molecule that you know about uh, so far in this class. Uh, but you'll find out by the end of the entire lecture, there is more to aromaticity than just benzene. But benzene is kind of the, the go-to example for aromaticity because it's so ubiquitous in the organic chemistry world. So if you... Um, if you recall, benzene is a cyclic compound. It's a six-member ring compound that has three alternating double bonds within the structure. However, the pi bonds are not you know, static. They don't um, remain localized in a specific you know, set of carbons. Instead, you could move the pi bond, like this one right here, to the left side. And to preserve the octet rule of all the carbon atoms involved in benzene, what that would mean is that this double bond on the left side has to move over down here. And by the same logic, the double bond down in this position will have to migrate over to the right side of the molecule. And basically you end up with the same picture, you know, and at first look, you might say it's the same thing. Uh, and you're not exactly wrong, but if you pay close attention, you realize that the spots where you used to have a single bond, now that's where you have the double bonds. And vice versa, the spots where you had the double bonds are now the spots where you have single bonds. So in essence, all of the bonds kind of have the same description overall. Half the time they're double bonds, half the time they're single bonds. And this is what um, the German chemist Kekulé um, was pondering about for you know for quite a while and and the story goes as follows he you know one night you know he went to sleep and he had a dream and in the dream he basically uh dreamt of what you see here uh figure wise on the left side a snake eating its own tail and as soon as he woke up from that you know bizarre dream he came to the realization that because the dull bonds can undergo this resonance structure over and over in reality, they are fully delocalized throughout the entirety of the six-member ring. And so oftentimes, we just depict the Benson ring with a circle as opposed to drawing the three double bonds because we're kind of uh, totally emphasizing the idea that, yes, the electrons are fully delocalized and free to move about that entire six-member ring. Um, and then probably if um, Kekule would have been alive, uh, you know, now, and, and this topic came up, he probably would have watched Inception and he would have been like, oh my God, <laughs> that's what aromaticity is all about. All right, so uh, one extra thing that I want to mention to you, um, this uh, is kind of a little throwback to the spectroscopy lecture. The index of hydrogen deficiency or IHD uh, of a molecule, if you, if you end up calculating that value and you get a value of one, uh, that could be explained by having a ring in the structure or having a double bond in the structure. If you had an index uh, hydrogen deficiency of two, you, that could be explained by having a triple bond or having two double bonds or having two rings or having one double bond in a ring. And the IHD values are basically additive. So when you look at benzene, you're dealing with pretty much one ring. And within that ring, we have three double bonds. So a benzene ring has an IHD value of four. And usually when doing spectroscopy examples, I, I do tell my students that 
if you do hit an IHT value of four or higher, there is a really good chance that you are dealing with an aromatic ring in your structure. It's not a full guarantee, mind you, because you have many other combinations that can also give you an IHT of four, uh, but a benzene ring is one of the most common ones. So it's something to kind of pay attention to when trying to discern the structure of a, of an, of an, an a molecule that may happen to be aromatic. All right, so what makes um, aromatic compounds uh, their own class of molecules within the world of organic chemistry is because the reactivity is uh, quite different. And one thing that kind of shows that is uh, a reaction where you could have um, an alkene such as cyclohexene and you can hydrogenate it, basically add H2. You know, you'll, you'll need the presence of a catalyst like palladium to fully do this, but you could measure the heat that uh, is produced when the hydrogenation happens. And in the case of cyclohexene, hydrogenating that one double bond uh, liberates a total of 120 kilojoules per mole worth of energy. That's the enthalpy of hydrogenation. And if you do the same thing, but this time around you do it with um, cyclohexene, well, technically cyclohexadiene, um, you actually get about twice the energy that you get from just one single bond, which you kind of would say, okay, well, that kind of makes sense, right? Because if you have an extra double bond to hydrogenate, you're going to get about the same amount of energy as the first double bond. So, you know, it makes sense that this will be close to 240, uh, being that the single bond by itself, or excuse me, the single double bond by itself will give you 120 kilojoules per mole. But what it gets interesting is that when you get to the situation where there's three double bonds inside the six member ring, AKA when you're dealing with benzene, uh, the hydrogenation of all three of them doesn't add up all the way to 360, which will be the projected value uh, of hydrogenating, you know, three double bonds, which are, you know, alkenes through and through. Instead, the value drops down to 208 kilojoules per mole, meaning that the benzene molecule with the three double bonds conjugated um, is a lot more stable than just your regular uh, dienes or just your regular alkene for that matter. And the only way that will be the case is if there is, you know, an, uh, an additional source of stabilization within the molecule, which now we call aromatization. Um, so this kind of gives us an idea that yes, benzene has uh, something exceptional to it compared to just yes, alkenes. All right, then we already talked about the 360 kilojoule expected, but you know, we are stabilized by about 152 if you do the subtraction basically from the actual value compared to the expected value. Uh, and then um, just to kind of take this point further, right? Because benzene, you know, does have the three double bonds conjugated in a row, but it is within a cyclic system. So you may wonder, well, what happens if you have the same situation, but you don't actually do it with a cyclic system. Instead, you do it with a linear chain. So you could have one hexene, do the hydrogenation, and you get about the same enthalpy of hydrogenation as you did for cyclohexene. If you do the same thing with 1,3 um, hexadiene, you get twice as much the value that we got from just um, hexa, you know, hexene, excuse me. <laughs> it's about to say cyclohexene. Uh, and then here is the, the part that should make this basically like, yes, okay, there's something special about benzene itself. When you do this with hexatriene, which is literally the same situation as we have with benzene, but it's not cyclic, you get literally three times the amount of energy output as we did for hexene itself. So that basically shows right there that, okay, this was not a fluke. Like this is in fact uh, showing us that there is extra stabilization within benzene and it's all of it. It's the conjugation of the three double bonds and the fact that they're part of a six member ring altogether. So all those things kind of have to come together to, to give us this extra stability. So um, the point to be made is that not only do you have this extra stability from the point of view of uh, the enthalpy of hydrogenation of the molecule, but if you think about your basic addition reactions, right? Like if you react hexatriene with bromine 
elemental bromine. Um, well, you can brominate, and we're assuming under this example, only one equivalent of bromine, right? Uh, we could basically get the 1,6 adduct addition product. We could get the uh, 1,2 adduct and the 1,4 adduct, right? Which we talked about this type of reactivity in the conjugated alkene lecture. But when you try to do this with benzene, which once again is a cyclic system, unlike the hexatriene example up here, um, if you try to do the same reaction under the same exact conditions, nothing happens. Benzene does not get brominated. And unless you actually introduce a catalyst in the system, um, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, um, one catalyst of choice is iron three bromide. Uh, under that situation, you do get benzene to react, but it doesn't actually react the way that alkenes do. Because if you notice here, you're adding the two bromines of Br2 to your conjugated alkene. But in the case of benzene, you're only adding one. And in fact, you're not even adding it because if you really realize what's going on right here, in the addition events right here, one of the three double bonds is lost once the two BRs are added. But in the case of benzene, you never lose the, 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 the full conjugation, the three double bonds. Instead, what you're doing is a full on substitution reaction, not an addition. So you are actually getting totally different chemistry with benzene than you do with regular alkenes. And this is ultimately the main reason why we don't group benzene within the alkene family. The aromatic family is separate from alkenes simply because the chemistry is different. All right, so, and yes, the aromaticity is gonna be at the core of it. So in the next video, I am gonna mention to you, you know, I'm gonna remind you of the nomenclature of uh, aromatic compounds. Uh, some of them you probably have seen and some of them will be new. And after that, we'll get really into the core details of what it means to be aromatic. So I will see you in the next video.